Step into the twilight with Paranormal M, where reality fades into the mysterious. Don't miss out on our latest discoveries. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to stay informed. Get ready to uncover the extraordinary. Unexplainable Smells When I was around 20, I spent a lot of time at my then-girlfriend's house. Her parents were cool with me staying over, which I often did. One night at around 3 a.m., my ex woke me up asking if I smelled bacon. I did, very strongly, in fact. She asked me to check it out, so I wandered to the kitchen and looked for the source. But no one was there, and everything was off. The smell was equally strong in the kitchen as it had been in her bedroom. Shortly after her dad came down the stairs asking why I was making bacon at 3 a.m., I explained I wasn't. I was checking out the smell myself. Together we checked the oven, the bin, the fridge, and there was nothing to explain it. We even checked outside to see if it was coming into the house, but no. The smell was in the house, but it seemed to be everywhere equally. The lounge, dining room, hallway all smelled strongly. It took about half an hour to dissipate, and we just went to bed scratching our heads about it. The next day, her mother confirmed that there was not any bacon in the house that week in the first place. So the episode remained a mystery. And I should mention it was fairly large and fairly old, like a hundred years or so, you know, as far as the house goes. My other experience was working in a pub as a barman. Other staff members there claimed to have seen what they described as a grey lady. A shadowy figure in an old-fashioned dress who appeared unusually, or, well, rather usually, in the entranceway late at night when they were closing up. I never saw her, but several times I smelt strong floral perfume in that entryway with no apparent source. This was back when smoking in pubs was legal, so stale smoke was pretty much the only thing you could usually smell. You can probably understand why I didn't make the title. I smelled bacon and perfume. Seems like a good title to me. The number 1,111. I've had maybe two dozen encounters over the past 25 years that I'm at a total loss to explain. But this post isn't about those. It's about the number 1,111. It seems to keep appearing around the same time that I have an encounter. Before and after, usually for several days and up to about a week. Realistically, how many times can you expect to see the number 1,111 in a day? Maybe twice if you check time often. Well, at least twice. But I seem to have had days or weeks when the number is everywhere. I could see it maybe ten times or more in a day. Some recent examples are twice a day on a clock, and obviously I, well, I buy some things at a store and the total is... 11 pounds 11. Or maybe my change is 11 pounds 11. I ask somebody's number and that 1111 is in there. I put a stopwatch on to time exercises and I stop it and by chance it's 11 minutes 11 seconds. I hang up a call, I realize it lasted 11 minutes and 11 seconds. Some of the events are quite improbable. Today, my computer screen froze at 11.11 and the time was stuck there for a few minutes until I gave up and rebooted. The other day, a dude in my street asked me for the time, and guess what? 11.11. I must have looked like a psycho because I pulled my phone out, saw the time, and just walked off without answering him. I mean, who even asks strangers for the time anymore? It's been years since I was last asked. In the past, the numbers always coincided with me seeing or hearing something I can't explain. And since over the last few days, 1111 is popping up everywhere. And again, I imagine it's just a matter of time. Maybe I'll post again if something happens. 
Does anybody else see 1111 or any other sequence of numbers all the time? Any theories on what it means? Up until the last few days, I hadn't seen 1111 more frequently than any other sequence of numbers for five or so years. I definitely have a few acquaintances that say things like this to me. I saw a ghost in my apartment. This was about five years ago. I bought a modest two-bedroom apartment in a big city. The building was about 60 years old. A few strange things happened there, although I didn't feel like it was continuously haunted. Before I moved in, the apartment had been empty for a while. The day I moved in, I was unpacking things in the kitchen. That's when I heard what I can only describe as a loud, zombie-like groan lasting several seconds emanating from the lounge. I went in there to investigate the noise, but seeing as it was literally empty at the time, I had no furniture yet. There was really no explanation. The heating was not on as it was summer, so it wasn't pipes. Ultimately, I assumed it was a strange building noise and ignored it half expecting to see or hear something again, which might plausibly explain it. I never heard that sound or anything like it again, and thinking about it still creeps me out. Another thing that happened to me was my TV would turn itself on and off by itself. Thought the TV set was faulty and used to, like, turn the plug socket off when I wasn't using it to stop it happening. Since moving out, my same TV has been fine. At night, I'd be lying awake and my phone screen would turn on as if someone pressed home. Again, I thought faulty phone. But it carried on even after getting a new one. And in the new house, it hasn't happened. Also, Siri came on a few times during the nights and woke me up, although I was too asleep to follow what Siri was saying. A couple of months before I moved out, I woke up in the night. I was hearing somebody sobbing. I sat up and looked at the doorway, and I see a silhouette figure of a woman with long hair hanging in front of her face and crying into her hands. My girlfriend had moved in with me by this point, so thinking she must have got some bad news, and I asked what's wrong. She continued sobbing, so I put my hands down to either side of me to push myself up and up out of bed, and that's when my hand touches my girlfriend who's still asleep next to me. Freaked out, I looked back to the doorway, but the figure is gone. Though I heard the sobbing continue for a few seconds, I got up and checked, but there was nobody else in the apartment. My experience. I, a 19-year-old male at the time, and a couple of buddies went to this creepy house down the street. Like almost every neighborhood there was, there was one house that nobody lived in and looked super creepy looking. So being the dumb kids that we were, my best friend, let's call him Eric, and my buddy from work, let's call him John, went to what everybody called the Crown House. Apparently, the last owner died in the house from carbon dioxide poisoning. But people who were there, this was like two years ago, they said they saw their face literally destroyed. I'm talking skin melting off, blood and scratches all over their face. Some rumors speculated the owners did some ritual type stuff, summoning the devil and stuff. Ever since then, everybody kind of stood away from the house. People who went in would never be the same. Like they would say they would hear things that weren't even there. Think things that weren't their thoughts. So me and my buddies thought it would be a great idea to explore. And let me tell you what I saw was horrific. I don't want to sound like the person who believes ghosts and stuff are real. But what happened was real. And I have proof. Eric picked the lock to the front door. When we got in, the first thing we noticed was the smell. Rancid, like meat had been left out for years. 
and though the blistering sun outside was freezing inside this house, it was cold. That's when it started. The whispers, faint enough that you couldn't make it out, loud enough that you knew it was there. Eric and John didn't hear it at first, but after a while they could. The lights weren't working, so we depended on the window light, but still it was dark. We were in there for ten minutes, and in ten minutes this happened. We heard footsteps coming down the stairs. We ran to the nearest door, which was the basement. We were in darkness. Eric screamed, then John screamed. Later they told me they heard a voice. It said my name. Then I felt a sharp pain in my arm. Something scratched me. Blood trickled down my arm. Something scratched John's face. We ran out of there faster than ever. Two years later, I found out it's for sale again. Good luck to the homeowners for 840 Rosenbaum Bridge. I'll be praying for you. The Ghost at Grandma's My grandparents bought a newly made house in Arizona back in 2000. It was somehow haunted with them being the first owners of the home. I would visit them for a month during spring, uh, summer break when I was a child. While my grandparents were still working, I'd be at the house by myself. The feeling that you're not alone is very real, and was one that I think children shouldn't encounter. The only time I heard it speak, it said my name as if someone was in the same room as me. It was a man, possibly in his fifties. This man wasn't angry. He was just there. The man became a nuisance as time went on. White blurring some pictures that were taken within the home during with the disposable camera days, you know. He would always turn on the ceiling fans and the lights would flicker. When that happened, you learned to tune it out after a while, but just turning up the TV volume. My uncle and I were once at the home while the rest of the family was just, you know, on holiday shopping. While we're sitting in the living room, I saw a transparent shadow walking from the hallway and then disappear. I kept quiet since it wasn't believable and thought it couldn't have been dismissed as like my 14-year-old imagination. As I looked over at my uncle, he was frozen looking at the same spot. Do you see that shadow walking over there? With excitement, I replied. Thought I was the only one who saw that. As I mentioned before, this entity wasn't hostile. It kind of was annoying. When I was 21 house sitting, it was my last straw after it turned, like, rather, it turned on the pantry light right in front of me. I could even hear the switch on the wall physically click. I was frozen with shock for ten minutes and later he yelled at it, saying, If you don't knock that shit off, you're not welcome here. I never... Uh, the quote. <laughs> I never encountered the man after that. The house was sold in 2021. I failed that story. Let's go to the next one. Horse Hooves This takes place in Arizona, near the border. I, a twenty-something-year-old male, was staying with Grandma for the summer to help her around her property with chores and such. It's a spacious ranch and the lots in the country. Not too big, a few acres. We have neighbors. Our house is right next to the freeway. My Grandma's old school doesn't like to use the central air conditioning unless it's super hot. So we all slept in the same room with the window unit AC. Me and my grandma and my little cousin. This is farm country. But none of our close neighbors had horses. And the only ones that did keep them in their designated pen area and into their stalls at night. One night my grandma and cousin say they heard the distinct sounds of horse hooves clanking around outside around 1 a.m., apparently just walking around. We have a concrete driveway right outside the room so you can hear the hooves clapping. 
I was dead asleep. They decided not to wake me up. The next morning, the front lawn was full of horse hoof prints. It looked like it intentionally tore up the grass. My grandma's not superstitious, but says that she went outside during the night when she would hear it. She's fearless. Said that she heard the horse stomping, but nothing was like it. Oh. It was like it was invisible, basically. So I stayed up the next night. High point, 380 under my pillow, just in case. All in the same room again, I'm on my phone. Grandma and cousin fell asleep already, lights are off and everything, and I hear it. Faint clacks. Horse hooves just walking right outside. But I've been around horses, and I know how they sound, but I only hear, like, two hooves. Like this horse was walking on two hooves instead of four. I don't know, take what you want from the story, believe it or not. That's the end, nothing happened after that. We talked to our neighbors up the road, who had very nice horses. They said they had locked theirs up at night in the stalls. I don't know, just sharing an experience. My grandma says it was the devil, but I'm skeptical. I just got Waterboy flashbacks. Did anybody else? Evil Bruja slash Witch Curse This is a real story from my friend that happened to his ex-girlfriend's family. My friend Adam was dating a girl a few years back. His girlfriend's mom lived in Yakima. They went to live with her for about a year. One day they tell my friend that his girlfriend's uncle, girlfriend's mom's brother, who lived in Mexico, was sitting in the kitchen one night. That's when he had seen an evil witch outside through the window. So scared he didn't talk for days. Fast forward a few years, Adam's girlfriend was walking through Tijuana one day. That's when a palm reader, a bruja type lady, walks up to her asking if she could read her palm. Adam's girlfriend declined her offer, thinking the lady just wanted her money. But the lady then tells Adam's girlfriend that she wasn't interested in the powerful bill that she had on her. Adam's girlfriend had a hundred dollar bill in her pocket, but the lady offered to read her palm for free. So Adam's girlfriend agreed and the lady proceeds to read her palm. Then tell her there is a family curse, or a very powerful curse on her and her family. Fast forward another year or so. The girlfriend's mom, who lived in Yakima, got into a relationship with the man from Tijuana who was in jail, but getting out soon. She was so in love with this guy that she left everything in Washington and moved to Tijuana to be with him. Not long after the mom moved to Tijuana to be with her new boyfriend, she gets in a nasty car accident, leaving her almost totally paralyzed. From what my friend said, she could only move her eyes, almost in a vegetative state. Young mom who left her good job in a hospital in Washington to be with this new boyfriend, now basically totally paralyzed. His family members now take care of her, her brother and the uncle who seen the witch in Mexico. They go to her house to collect all of her things, and she was now paralyzed and living with them. But when they go to her place to collect her things, the brother-slash-uncle looking through her things finds a piece of dried skin or leather. It's like this thing with an evil old witch face carved into it. The same evil witch he'd seen outside his window a few years back. The mom of the friend's girlfriend, now ex, is still paralyzed to this day. This story always gives me the chills. I think my sister invited something into my house. I, a 16-year-old male, live at home with my mom, her boyfriend, and my sister, 17-year-old female. My sister's a bit weird. She messes around with witchcraft and tarot cards and crystals. I'm a Christian who views witchcraft as demonic and something which should simply be left alone. My sister's the polar opposite. Since she started messing around with black magic and things she doesn't understand, 
Strange things have started happening in my house. My mom has been experiencing whispers in the night. I don't know what time these experiences happened, but she heard whispers which made her shoot up in bed and I've also experienced the same. She never told me her experiences until I told her mine. I was struggling to get to sleep near midnight and I felt uneasy. I was trying to sleep and I became paranoid. I locked my door and sat on the edge of my bed when suddenly something whispered directly behind me. Its breath was cold and made every hair in my body stand on end. Back of my neck and shoulders shivered where its breath went. It made me shoot up in shock. It was a whisper that lasted a couple seconds at the most. Couldn't understand what it said, but it sounded female. My mom said she thought the whispers were my sister until she woke up. It was a female whisper. My dog's also been acting strange, suddenly staring into dark corners of my house, not budging. Something which he'd never done before. A couple of nights ago, we began growling at the corner of the living room. My dog never growls or barks. These events are very recent and have begun occurring since my sister started messing around with witchcraft. The uneasy feelings and cold whispers shared by me and my mom can't be a coincidence. My dog's suddenly questionable behavior must mean something is in my house. I don't yet know if it's malevolent or not. I'll keep updates on any other events. Something that happened with my mom. So my mom and dad have both had some pretty serious encounters with the other side of the world. My dad's well, something I don't really remember well. But my mom, there's two which I know. One where I've only heard it, and two where I witnessed it. I'll do the only one right now. This one is related to one of the ones I witnessed. Me and Mom were on a vacation, went to my aunt's place as we do every year. We were asleep in the master bedroom and at about 2 a.m. my mother woke up, saw a figure in white sitting beside my legs and stroking it lovingly. My mother freaked out and didn't move, but she stared at the figure. I was asleep, so I didn't realize anything happening around me, but yeah. Then when the figure noticed my mom looking, it got up and went to the door, looked back at my mom, and disappeared. My mom told all of us this morning. My aunt said that it had happened before, too. Ow. It was when my aunt was asleep and I woke up to use the restroom. But she couldn't move. She was, like, paralyzed. The same figure was standing right next to the washroom. She could see it, but couldn't move at all. And the figure moved closer to her and she started crying. And then all of a sudden the ghost disappeared. Then she told us one of their guests who came over for a party then went to the restroom in the master bedroom. The one that we stayed at. She opened the wardrobe for a towel to wipe her hands. Fool, this face. She saw a white figure inside. She was screaming and crying and everybody rushed into the room. Obviously, they couldn't see the figure, but she was so scared, they left immediately. My grandma died seven years ago. My aunt said that she could sense it was her. She came in her dreams. She comes in my mom's dreams, my dad's dreams, too. In our culture, it means that the soul hasn't found peace. And I wouldn't blame her if she hasn't. The way that she died wasn't ideal, and a lot of things were messed up after her death in the family. But yes... We do think it was my grandma, but that also makes no sense at the same time because she was the sweetest soul ever. I don't think she'd want to scare us all. A Modern Ghost Story This is placed years ago when my family and I first moved into a house. It's written like a novel because I had planned to publish it in a collection of horror stories and I never really got around to doing. Here we go. You know when you move into a new house when you're young and even if it isn't very big, every wall, every corner seems to just go on and on? That is the exact feeling I had. 
even a year after my family and I moved in. When I'd be left alone, even though I was almost a teenager, I still felt scared of the narrow basement hallway connecting our living room to the rest of the house. Something about it seemed off. How close the walls were. How dark it was. You couldn't fit side by side with somebody while walking down it. It just felt eerie. I remember us playing piano in the living room. It was one of those days where everybody had left the house, leaving me to entertain myself. I was practicing for an upcoming recital. The chords fitting awkwardly into my small hands when faintly through my playing I heard, Be quiet. I stopped for a moment. I knew I was home alone and the voice was faint enough for it to have been somebody's radio from outside. I rationalized this to myself and I kept playing. A moment later I heard, Be quiet. The voice was closer, a little bit clearer even through the noise from the piano. I stopped once more, staring behind me at the long, narrow hallway that separated me from the rest of the house, separated me from my bedroom. I shook my head, pushing the disembodied voice in the back of my mind once more. I have to practice my performance. I remember saying that out loud, still scared, but slightly irritated. Maybe I believed I was talking to someone and I continued to play. Shut up. I heard it clear as day. It was a voice shouting from directly above my shoulder. I shot up from the bench and raced to my room, heart pounding, my feeble lungs choking on air. I just sat there in my bedroom floor, hyperventilating until my parents came home and reassured me. It had just apparently been radio signals being picked up by our nearby computer. Not really sure if that's a thing. I never heard the voice again, but I had a friend who mentioned that he had heard it in my room at the foot of my bed, telling him to be quiet while he'd been restlessly under the blankets at night when I was sound asleep. My parents called me to come downstairs. It was 1 o'clock a.m. I was sleeping, of course, as a young lad should be doing midweek. My parents called me to come downstairs, and I saw not in the moment what was going on. I asked my father why they called me to come downstairs quickly, and he said that, You'll see. So they were smoking, and minutes go by, and I thought that they were joking or something. So I watched the TV with them, and suddenly my mom said, Look! She was pointing at the circle of smoke that was hovering mid-air. When I was looking at the smoke, it became very, very thick. You know, it was clear like some steam and had a very nice circle. It wasn't off. It was about 360 degrees. Fine looking. Some seconds go by and it hovered above my dad. It was hovering above his head. He was looking like a saint from pictures. You know that holy circle. I was mind-struck or blown or whatever. I was completely shocked. Then the next thing happened. He blew a second layer of smoke from that cigarette, and the smoke became thick again. It was figuring like a circle, and again this time it hovered towards my mom and hovered above the head of her. The circle by my dad was still there. I was asking what was happening, and they smiled and said they didn't know. So I stayed up all night long and nothing happened after. The next morning I stood up and asked my parents if they remembered the same thing. They told me exactly what happened, and they were mind blown also. And I gotta say, it's the first time I've seen cigarette spelled S-I-G-A-R-E-T. But very well worded, nonetheless. Cigarette. My Nana's house has a bit of a sad history. The house was built on a plot of land as a dream home for a newlywed and pregnant couple. Shortly before move-in day, the wife was shot and killed while getting off a bus downtown. The baby couldn't be saved. The husband, in his grief, shortly after killed himself. The 
house then went to market and my papa bought it for Nana. They also newlyweds. <clears throat> As the time went by, weird things started happening in the house. Little things like lighters would go missing or the remote which was on the coffee table would be found under the couch or you could hear the pool balls from the pool table crack, even though they were in her case. This freaked my papa out, but Nana was much harder to scare. Every now and then you'd see scratch marks on the cathedral ceilings, only to hire a painter. They're gone the day you'd show up. This happened on four occasions. Still, Nana was not scared. Shortly after, Papa had an accident and he passed. This left Nana alone in the house. Years passed, and in my teens, I moved from my country and in with Nana. I'm walking to the kitchen one day. I hear Nana talking. She's saying, don't you touch them again, you old witch. I pop into the kitchen and ask Nana who she's talking to. Mabel, she replies. I assume Mabel is one of the cats she rescued and carry on. Every now and then I hear Nana talking to Mabel. It's usually like, don't touch this. Or would you stop that? Like playing with the lights or knocking over a fan. It never occurs to me to address it. That is until one night I have this horrific dream about a woman being shot. I woke up terrified and I see almost like a dark shadow fading from the foot of the bed. I'm completely freaked out, but I just think it's my eyes adjusting after being jolted awake like that. The following morning I tell Nana about my dream over breakfast. Oh, that's just Mabel. She'll come to you from time to time. I was wondering if she was going to show herself to you, she says. I'm taken aback. Nana tells me the Mabel story and how Mabel is the wife. I ask Nana is that who she's been talking to, and she confirms that it is. As time goes on, little things start to go missing as usual. I'm creeped out at first, but I make a game of it by hiding things and moving glasses. Sometimes the family's around and saying stuff like, Oh, Mabel, and his cigarettes go missing. Must have been Mabel. Mabel one night on Christmas Eve decided to walk up the stairs, and her footsteps got a little too close for comfort when I shouted, Stop it, Mabel. You're scaring me. And they stopped. Fast forward again, and I moved out of the house. Nana's passed away and me and my sister are tasked with going through her things. No one has been in the house for months. The power has been turned off and me and my sister entered the home after sundown. Once we're on the front landing, like from the landing you can see the downstairs and to the left of us the upstairs to the top landing. Standing in the entryway, something just didn't feel right. We go upstairs and start to collect some things. Going through Nana's china, and my sister walks into the dining room and says, Tell me you heard that. What? Tell me you hear that baby crying. I stop and listen, and I do. It's very faint, and it's coming from the basement. I ask my sister if the TV's on one of the basement bedrooms. It could be on. She reminds me that the power is cut. I ask if it's a neighbor. We live a quarter mile from anyone. We walk to the lot like the living room, and I lean over the landing, and sure as hell, there is a baby crying. I tell my sister to call the police and go down slowly to the second landing. My sister exits the house. From the second landing, I slowly proceed toward the basement, fearing a crackhead or something may have broken into the empty house and made this place their home. When I get to the bottom of the steps, what I felt can only be described as what you feel when a car is close to you with an incredibly loud bass system, where you feel and hear the sound and the hair stand on end, except now the baby crying has turned into an all-out banshee scream. It's as if somebody was in anguishing pain. I turned and ran up the stairs, slamming into my sister on the way out the front door. We both book it as fast as we can to the car shaking and my sister's panicking. She heard and felt it from the front porch. We throw the car in reverse and reverse all the way down Anna's driveway, eyes on the front door almost expecting someone to run out. But no one does. 
Two officers arrive and we explain what happens. They enter the house and find nothing. No signs of forced entry and nothing disturbed. To this day, I'm convinced that it was Mabel. Maybe it's Mabel. Maybe it's... I can't finish that. Ghost or duendes are gnomes. I live alone in an oldish house built in the 80s. A few weird things have happened since living there. Things going missing when guests come over and appear the next day. And things that we've spent forever searching everywhere for and then they're placed in the most obvious spot ever. I've had a general sense of uneasiness while living here, but nothing crazy. I've lived somewhere I consider a haunted when I was a child, and this is definitely a different feeling. Lights will randomly stop working the second I really need them. Just overall annoying things. Recently I started having dreams of an old man attacking me and my dog, not letting me leave the house. I've never had nightmares like this before. Most recently I was getting ready for a trip. My fire alarm went off like I was in well, this was while I was in the shower, so I ran out of the shower to check on my dog and the alarm immediately stopped. I get back in the shower and my doorbell starts going off. This time, I'm a little bit slower, but I get out of the shower and I check the front door and no one's there. I felt so scared. Nothing dark was done, so still mostly just annoying. I mentioned me leaving for a trip because I'd previously spent a week in my mom's house with the dog to care for her after major surgery. We joked that the ghosts or duendes in my house would be pissed that I'm leaving again. I live in a cul-de-sac with a lot of trees. Friends have suggested duendes, but the nightmares have me worried it could be an entity of whoever lived here before. I rent the unit from a landlord that I low-key hate. He's an older white guy who keeps finding reasons to text me or to come over. I'm a girl living alone. So I'd rather not poke around and ask him questions about previous owners, but I don't know what to do. Has anyone experienced anything like this? My mom bought me Palo Santo to burn, and I'm afraid of doing it wrong. My grandma bought me holy water from a popular big Catholic church in South Texas that I splash on the walls and above my door frames every few weeks. That's as far as remedies. If it's sheetrock... Don't splash water on it. Just use your finger and put some on there. Me, a friend, and someone else. This happened to me and a friend of mine, who I'll call Greg from now on. Because he thinks this should be between the two of us, let's just say. When I was on my third year of high school after the COVID pandemic and lockdown, me and Greg are living in pretty much the same city. It's not even really that big. We had this place that we enjoyed hanging out because there were no one really around there, no drunk dudes, no annoying babies or crazy parents. Maybe only a few people in the calming sound on grass. It's near the biggest park that we have, so the trail isn't that hidden. We used to go there during summer, but this time it was November and we were shaking. But we just wanted to be alone, and the creepy atmosphere was intriguing as fuck. We had only one instant from the last time that we went there. Yes, 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 Gecko. I think I'll share here in the future that. He was skipping about going there, and I was a talkative motherfucker, so it wasn't hard to convince him. I shit you not, a few minutes we entered the trail, someone's shadow blocked us. It blocked the only way out. I was scared too, it was pitch black. 10.40pm and it was winter. My phone's light was sufficient only for seeing that silhouette. I think it was a man, definitely not long hairs. I don't know how tall, but not really. 
Even though I flashed him, I still couldn't see the colors of his clothes or body. It was as black as the light background, or rather lightless background. Not even the moonlight nor the flame of a lighter he used could change it. It was completely black, devoid of color, except for the sub-scattering high of the little flame and the light that he didn't move at all, except when he took the lighter from what I assumed was a pocket on him. I was terrified. Greg was terrified. Grabbed my right arm as his life depended on it. But no matter how much we were shaking or panicking, that man didn't move. He stood still on the trail without making any trip of sound. So I started saying out loud how lucky we were to bring with our knives in case he would have found something dangerous. At one point, me and Greg discussed about calling our parents to take us from there. We'd have to elaborate a story so that they wouldn't be concerned. But as I turned to watch my phone, Greg said that we still had the light, so I immediately raised it in the direction of that quote-unquote man. I was shocked. G was frantically tapping my arm, saying, He's not there. We get out. And it was true. In those few seconds, quote-unquote he got out of our vision, which of course drove us crazy and prompted us to run faster and faster in the direction where the street light would illuminate everything, which would hopefully make us feel safer. We got out of the trail, and that night I felt better than ever when I got underneath my sheets. Of course, I stayed with Greg for the rest of the evening until he arrived at his house complex. Felt so guilty, and accompanying you to home made me feel a little bit better. A Family Story Coincidence or Fate? The story's been told to me several times by my older siblings. I tend to believe their story. It's only been discussed privately, and I've only shared this story with one or two friends in the 40 plus years I've known it. Background My parents had a very rocky marriage. They married because he got her pregnant and their families basically forced a wedding. My parents ended up moving in Fort Tower. Blech. My parents ended up moving 14 hours away from their hometown. When things were good, they were very, very good. But when things were bad, well... So this takes place in the early 60s, before I was born. My parents had a huge fight. My father stormed out to drive around and cool off. My mother packed suitcases and left a note for my dad that she was taking the kids and going home. In quotes. She threw everything into the trunk, got my siblings in the car, and everybody was crying and screaming, and it was supposedly chaos. My mom got in the car, started the engine. A car pulled in behind her. A couple got out of the car, claiming to be my mother's cousins. They were from California, and we live on the East Coast. They were on their way to my parents' hometown to visit family, and had gotten our address from a close relative of my mother. They were hoping to stay the night before starting off home the next day. My mother felt obligated to invite them in. Her cousins noticed that she'd been crying. She broke down and spilled her guts to them. They comforted her and just convinced her to call the family pastor. They came to the house and picked the husband and cousin, and they eventually found my father at a bar. The pastor drove my father home while the husband and cousin followed in my dad's car. The pastor and my mom's cousins counseled my parents. Pastor left around midnight. Cousins stayed up late into the night helping my parents work everything out. After breakfast the next day, Mom's cousin left to continue their journey. Parents never heard from these cousins again. The next time my parents were home, my mother asked a relative who had given the cousins our address. Her relative had no idea who she was talking about. She claimed she had never given her address to anyone. Mom started asking other family members. Nobody knew who these people were or how they could possibly be related to us. Who were these people who pulled into our driveway in a car with California plates 3,000 miles away? Why were they up most of the night counseling my parents never contact them again? How come nobody knew this couple? By the way, the parents stayed married for 39 years until my mother passed. 
even had more kids. Strong lady. I think my old apartment was haunted. I used to live in an old apartment built sometime around the 1970s or 80s. Experienced quite a few strange occurrences while living there. First was when I was about seven, maybe. I was terrified of the dark. I'd taken to sleeping in my mom's room with her. One night I woke up for no apparent reason, started looking around the room, as little kids do. My mom had a large circular mirror above her dresser. In the mirror was the figure of a woman. She had a veil covering her face and her clothes were very similar to a Victorian morning dress. Morning, M-O-U-R-N. I stared at her for a while before eventually going back to sleep. I still have no logical explanation for this. Couldn't have been a shadow because nothing in the room had been moved and she only showed up once. It also couldn't have been somebody outside the window since we live on the second floor. I saw two other strange things in my mother's room. First was an old disfigured man. He wore a white coat and had a cane. His face looked like it had melted off. Second was a girl, maybe early mid-teens. She had blonde hair, wore blue jeans and a red sweater. White sneakers. I remember her crying a lot. She peered several times, disappearing whenever I tried to look at her face or went to touch her. When I was about we were 13, I was lying in bed trying to fall asleep. That's when I felt somebody sit on my leg. thought it was my mom at first, but when I'd looked, nobody was there. Hid underneath my blankets until the weight went away. We had an intercom system to let people into the building. The system didn't have a microphone or anything, so all you have to do is buzz specific apartments. When you buzz the apartment, whoever's inside would push their own button to let you in. And this is important. Came home from school one day and had forgotten my key. So I buzzed my apartment. I was let inside. When I got to my apartment, the door was unlocked. So I assumed my mom had let me in. I looked around, but I couldn't find her, so I called her to ask where she had gone. Apparently, she was at work. She had never left work. She rushed home when I told her I had been let in, but nobody was in the apartment. Still don't know who let me in, or unlocked the door. My cousin saw our grandfather watching TV. Problem is, he's dead. This is my experience. It's my cousin's from my dad's side. I just want to post this here because I want answers. So every summer, me and my family would travel a long way to visit my dad's family in Cebu. It was quite close with my grandpa. He was a gentle and lively man. But years ago, he was diagnosed with heart disease and became bedridden. He even had to use a wheelchair to move around passed away a few months later, and it sucked a lot. Then, a few years after that, my elder cousin was looking for my grandma to tell her that dinner was ready. She went to the living room and saw my grandpa sitting in the old rocking chair while watching TV, holding the remote and switching through channels and stuff. The most unsettling part about the story, according to her, was that grandpa's neck was missing, like it was severed. His head was floating a couple inches above his body. He looked at her, smiled, and said, Oh, dinner's ready. I'll head down now. Then he stood up and walked toward the hall. My cousin screamed and ran away. Feel free to try to debunk this. I have no idea what to think. I'm not scared, and I don't think my grandfather would hurt anyone. Possible Shadow People Encounter So I've worked in my current job for a couple of years, minus one, where I was on maternity leave and always noticed this dark figure, almost like a 3D shadow that seems like it's peeking its head out in the corner of the window in the upstairs office. 
The part of the office that has a view down to the floor of the shop, mainly seeing the tills and stock area behind it. It seemed any time I notice the figure in my peripheral vision and I'll go to look directly where I've seen it, it's gone. For a while when I'd seen it, it was just out of my peripheral vision, then vanished when directly looking at it. But in recent times, I've noticed it standing at the top of the stairs in the doorway, and other times I heard a whisper in my ear sounding like, Hey! That was while I was alone next to the tills. They're at the bottom of the stairs. This happened after I returned to work from mat leave. We had a new manager who had moved over to the branch while I was away on maternity leave, and he said that he'd been seeing something similar while opening up the shop alone in the mornings, or even while downstairs. He'd be glancing and he'd see a figure in the window that would go when he looked at it. Note that I wasn't here when he started, and we hadn't had any communication prior. We're both not sure what it is. I don't recall how it came up in conversation. All I know is that we both have seen it. No other colleague says that they noticed it or have seen it. My manager's most recent experience with it is when he was on a ladder and turning around he saw the figure in the window. But instead of it just disappearing, it looked like it moved out of the way as if it were dodging its gaze. The estate or stores on used to be an old cattle market. That was up until about the late 90s. There's nothing we could find online to see if there was an incident that happened here. But any insight to what this may be or how to, we really got here, that's really all we're curious to know. Two Yellow Lights This happened like around 2006 or 2005. I don't remember the exact year, but it was when I was in elementary school. I woke up extremely earlier, maybe extremely late. It was extremely dark out and both of my parents were in my bedroom. My bed back then used to face towards a window. There's two windows in my bedroom. A large window toward the right and a tiny window with this little up and right in front of where my bed used to be. I woke up and saw two yellow lights. They were circular yellow lights, and they were pretty bright. Not sure about the bright part, though, but maybe it was just the fact that the entire outside was extremely dark, so the yellow seemed bright. Either way, one light was moving horizontally back and forth. The other light was moving rapidly, and it was moving above the horizontal moving light, and it was moving vertically. I remember at the moment when I woke up and saw both my parents staring at this tiny window I'd heard them talking, couldn't exactly remember what they were saying. I tried so hard to get myself up, but the exhaustion just took me. If I'd managed to overcome the exhaustion, I would have recorded that. I believe back then that I had something called a flit, I think. It's just a cheap recording device that my sister won and gave to me. Either way, it probably would have looked like crap, but I would have at least had footage. What I do not know is that it wasn't a gap in my memory or a dream. Well, it could have been. Both my parents remember what happened, but they don't really care. They just think it's weird, but at the very least, I don't really misremember anything did my best to try and look up whatever it was, and all I can gather is people saying it could have been a ball of lightning, or a satellite, or a searchlight, or even a plane. Which none of those even makes sense. I live in a suburb. Nowhere near a searchlight. We have a satellite, but it's literally below the suburb and a bit away from where I live, and obviously, a ball of lightning wouldn't move like that when I saw. It's extremely rare. I doubt two would simultaneously exist at the same time, like a plane wouldn't move like that. The best explanation I've heard from anyone online in real life was a drone. But in 2006 in a suburban California, the best drones we had in my memory were drones made out of like styrofoam and cheap plastic. Unless you mean military, we're not mentioning we were, we're certainly not near military base. Not to mention the lights were perfectly circular. 
It didn't look like a flashlight or something looking at the window. It just looked like perfectly circular yellow eyes. And of course, we have the explanation of aliens or something, but if I'm going to be honest, I don't really believe in that stuff. I mean, it'd be illogical to say no life exists outside of us, but I just try to avoid that kind of route. I just want to know a logical explanation of what I experienced all those years ago. Been bugging me like crazy as of late. Ask Reddit. Your spirit can take different vessels as you grow and shrink consciously. If you continue expanding and ascending, you can inhabit broader bodies of consciousness, like an idea to a planet or even a star and then into a galaxy or a constellation. If you go down in consciousness, you get to experience the passing of time and physical reality. That's why certain beings on here might have inhabited bodies in other planets or as ideas, like oversouls. An oversoul is the fourth dimensional being that moves through time and space and is able to affect the spirits and others in the third dimension. For example, Jesus Christ is an oversoul. His physical body has perished, but his name and essence still hold in direct power in this reality. These places of worship and has influence in societies all over the world for thousands of years now. The fourth dimension beings can enter people's lives as thoughts. Those can then alter the line of events that they are supposed to play out. They can enter into the minds of people who are close to you, give them an idea to call you or visit your house at the most inconvenient times. Or say if you're watching your favorite movie and your favorite part's just about to come on, but something catches your attention and distracts you right at that exact moment. That's when you know an idea or an oversoul influence that to happen. If it's opposing or attacking you. If it's a beneficial one to you, then it may help you at night. Places at the night times in order to help you succeed. An oversoul can even be reincarnated into a physical being. It's having trouble staying fed by people's attention in order to express this message and identity in a flash, it'll work its way back up again. An oversoul is just a fourth dimensional consciousness that you can, well, well pretty much just that, you can inhabit. And there's levels below and above that, and a higher consciousness might not necessarily be the best consciousness either. The first and ninth dimensional perspectives have a huge gap in consciousness, but at the same time, have the purest perspectives. This is from my knowledge so far. Feel free to ask, discuss, or refute anything. Ghosts in the middle of my creative process. My first encounters when I was practicing for president in school, or rather, presentation. I was in the front of the car with my phone flipped up in the mirror edge, camera open to the front. Not because I wanted to record myself, but I also wanted to practice my expressions beforehand. In the middle of this, I had to get something and left my phone when I would come back. There was like an eye on my screen, as in a huge pupil. I found the guts to get from the mirror ledge. The eye was gone, but my camera is now facing backwards. My second encounter was in the middle of my, well, middle of my feelings and the song was just pouring out of me, so I recorded it. But I played it back to review it just a few seconds in and there's a subtle change, like a change in atmosphere but caught in sound. A few seconds and more and the girl starts crying. It sounded close to the mic, not even a distant thing. I let people around me hear and then I deleted it. Then last week I was filming things for real, and we were just talking. I reviewed the recording just now, and the first thing I do is turn on auto captions so I can get through it quickly. While going through it, I just see a random fuck you. I played with the volume, no volume, just a pause where I'm trying to recall what's saying, ask, and I look not moving. 
played it again at the volume this time, it very clearly and audibly said, Fuck you. When I heard that, it made me think about my negative self-thoughts as well. Not sure if it's related, but sometimes these happen. Has anybody experienced anything like these? Some advice would be nice too. I think my son is seeing the man that died in our property. My son tells me creepy stories all the time. He'll tell me that he met a boy playing at our house built in the early 1800s. He met him alone with a name I've never heard of. Fell in with the pigs. We don't have pigs, but the farm did at some point. Got really hurt, but then he was fine and now he sees him around the property. He also sees a girl that was playing outside and had laid down, but she didn't fall. It was really, really cold, but she couldn't get up and she went to sleep and died and her parents cried a lot, but then she came back, but still cried because they couldn't see her. Okay, fine, but this is where it got me. When we moved in, he said that there's a man in the driveway. I don't see anyone. He says he's right there. He's done this before at the last place, but this time he asked me to close the curtains and uh, he's not nice. Today I asked him if he remembered the... Oh, well, he said, yeah, I don't like him, he's not nice. I asked him why he wasn't nice and he said that he said not nice things. I asked him to tell me more. He said, it's not safe for mamas and dadas to drive anymore. That's what he thought saying right there in the property of his car. I didn't like that. Craziest part is that, well, that land beside ours. The young man crashed his car into like a metal arc. It used to be cemented that the road flipped and landed on their land. The bent arc just sort of remains in our property because it's too big and heavy to move. But it sounds low in the arc isn't all that's here with us. We never watch scary movie stuff because I don't like it. I've had dreams of people who have passed from trying to speak to me. That was since I was a kid and try to suppress it so I don't have to encourage it. I had a surgery go a little sideways and now I see dead people. I have to tell somebody this because I'm shook. I had surgery last month, maybe a little more than a month ago. And ever since I woke up from surgery, I can see dead people as shadows. They're just around. It's so far, they're only my family, but it's not them. I see them, I've been battling an infection, and so these things, well, I keep thinking, okay, well, it's gonna pass. Ooh, probably just me being sick. But I called my mom to tell her that my aunt who passed a few weeks ago came in last night and just heard her whisper pssst, pssst, and some giggling. Wake up and it was bizarre. She was just as happy as she could be and wanted to share and play with me. She showed me that she could hug her parents again. Excuse me. Hug her parents again. They were all so happy. She showed me herself standing in the kitchen behind my parents, smiling and putting her hand on them, and she wanted me to see that she was at peace. She seemed really, really entertained, which was unexpected. My mom gasped. Apparently, before my aunt fell ill, she told her that mom and I sometimes get visited in our dreams by family to warn us of danger, or even that somebody passed, and my aunt said that she was jealous. When she died, she would have come to mess with us. On top of that, I was telling mom about how serious and real this is. And of course, here and there we have stuff happen. I've never been more sure in my life that it's real. I can really see people that have passed on, and I went from being freaked to making peace with it. But one thing I can't figure out is there's a five-year-old girl that stands beside my bed almost all days. I wake up constantly in the middle of the night thinking it's one of my kids asking to get into bed, but it's not. 
I don't even have a five-year-old girl. She loves to play her music box for me. I told her the only little girl I know that passed is Dad's sister, but she was like two or three. Dad said, I think she's five. I said, no, she was two or three. Go ask Dad. I'm 90% sure she was two or three. She goes to ask my dad and, well, I asked him how old his sister was when she died. He says she was five. I was in absolute shock and asked him if he had like a music box and he said, I don't know if I have to ask my brother, but she loved music and to sing, why? I spent maybe a couple more months telling my husband that I don't really know a five-year-old girl, so I don't know who she could be, but apparently I was wrong. She has been my Aunt Sophie all along with total make scenes of bullcrap. I've always felt my grandpa nearby. She was his baby girl that passed. I'm floored. My family's experiences. For the past two years, my mother has had several experiences in her house. She will often hear what sounds like dogs walking on the hardwood out of the kitchen, even though all the dogs are in the living room with her. And most recently, this past Wednesday morning, she saw a shadow next to her spot on the couch. The most common one, though, is that she will hear the side door close, like my dad's gotten home, except he hasn't. She's not hearing things either, as the dogs catch it too and they go over to greet him only for him not to be there. Speaking of the dogs, quite often they will sit and stare at the ceiling or into a corner. No growling or anything, just staring. My mom cleans religiously, so there's no cobwebs or anything that could be catching their eyes. I moved in last October after my divorce with my three dogs. I've had a couple of experiences myself. Thanksgiving of last year, we noticed that the clock on the wall in the dining room that had been dead with batteries for years and had one hand stucking straight up at the twelve where previously both had been at six. The hallway that leads to the side door in the laundry room as well as the office I slept in when I first moved back in I recently changed rooms to the other end of the house. It also gives me the creeps, constantly feeling like I'm being watched. My most recent experience was just two days ago. My parents were on vacation in Florida and just texted me that they were on their way home from the airport. I was in my room playing video games with my three dogs so it's on the bed with me. I'm about to go back to my game when I heard what sounded like a dog growling. Not unusual in a house of six dogs, but very unusual in the sound is coming from the kitchen attached to the same hallway as the laundry room and office. So all six dogs are with me and none of them sound like that when they growled. The creepiest one though occurred shortly after Christmas of 2020. My mother and I both came down with COVID. We were quarantined in our rooms. I was still sleeping in the office at that time. About midnight comes and my dad leaves for a fire. For obvious reasons, I didn't go, because I'm still awake watching TV and listening to the call on my radio. Dad had left the hallway light on when he left, when he looked over my dogs, because they're cute as fuck, especially when they're sleeping. I saw a shadow pass my door, blocking the light from the hallway. At this point, it's about 12.30. My day is still out on the call, and my mom is long since asleep. There are three dogs in the wall. My three dogs are in mine, and right after the shadow pass, one of my dogs stares at the door and starts growling. Now, this dog barks and grumbles a lot, but never anything like this. This was a full-on, who are you, get the fuck out of my house, kind of a growl. Needless to say, I didn't sleep till my dad got home and turned out the light. No way in hell I was getting out of bed and opening the door. At this point, I'm not really sure how many entities that we have around. I think it's at least three. One of our dogs that has since passed, which would explain the nails on the hardwood that we hear. 
We did think that one of the spirits, my grandmother, they passed away in 2015. She was an animal lover, which could explain why the dogs are so calm when staring up into the corners. Plus, the activity cooled down a little bit when we brought our ashes back out onto the shelf instead of in the closet. They had been placed in during renovations. Excuse me. Onto the shelf instead of the closet that they had been placed in during renovations. So as for the third one, I'm not sure. I don't want to say it's demonic, partially for my own sanity, because that'd be terrifying. And also because of, well, as somebody who questions the existence of God, I must also question the existence of demons. But whatever it is, it feels dark. I've always trusted a dog's measure of person. And if my boy doesn't like it, then I definitely don't believe it to be benevolent. Thanks for listening. I appreciate you. See ya.